I'm working through the photoelectric effect section of the 2019 physics paper, which starts with question 1.10, which is a multiple choice question, which reads as follows. Consider the statement below regarding the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect proves that light energy is quantized. We know that that is true. Two, light has particle nature. We know that that is true. And three, light has a wave nature. Now, we know that that is true, but that is not proven by the photoelectric effect. That is proven by various interference experiments that we have done. So the correct answer here, which statements above are correct, would be option C, which is statement 1 and 2 only. So the correct answer to 1.10 is option C. Then... The photoelectric effect question is always question 10 in this paper, and question 10 reads as follows. During an experiment, light of different frequencies is radiated onto a silver cathode of a photocell, and the corresponding maximum speed of the ejected electrons are measured. A graph of the energy of the incident photons versus the square of the maximum speed of the ejected photoelectrons is shown below, and here we can see this graph. We can see that at a certain energy the ejected speed is zero and then we can see as the energy increases from there the speed increases as well. Question 10.1 define the term photoelectric effect and the definition as per the exam guideline document is the process whereby electrons are ejected from a metal surface when light of a suitable frequency is incident on that surface. Use the graph to answer the following questions. Question 10.2, write down the value of the work function, and then important, use a relevant equation to justify the answer. And so we would do this using pretty much the only equation for photoelectric effect that we have, and that is that the energy of a photon is equal to the work function plus the maximum kinetic energy, where we know that the maximum kinetic energy is calculated as one half times the mass times the velocity squared. And now we know that when the maximum kinetic energy is equal to zero, we know that that means that the velocity at that point must be equal to zero. And when the velocity is equal to zero, that tells us once again that that maximum kinetic energy is zero, which from this equation then tells us that if energy is equal to the work function plus the kinetic energy, then when the energy, the kinetic energy is zero, then the energy must be equal to the work function. So what that tells us then is that the work function for silver is then 7.48 important to see here that that is times 10 to the power of negative 19 joules. This is important to add there. Right, so once again, we have used the equation for the photoelectric effect and said that we know that when the velocity is zero, the kinetic energy is zero. And from this equation, when the kinetic energy is zero, that suggests that the energy of the photon is equal to the work function, which is how we know that the 7.48 is then our work function. Question 10.3. Which physical quantity can be determined from the gradient of the graph? And I'm going to do this in rough work here, where the gradient of the graph we know is always the change in the y-axis over the change in the x-axis. In this case, that means that is the change in the energy of the photons, the final energy over the initial energy, where and then the change in the x-axis is the change in velocity. So final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared. Now, the final energy is calculated as the work function plus the final kinetic energy. And the initial energy is, once again, work function plus, which we use distributive law to see that that is actually negative, the initial kinetic energy the initial kinetic energy. So that then simplifies to give us the following, where we have 
final kinetic energy, which is one half m v f squared minus one half m v i squared over v f squared minus v i squared, which eventually, when you simplify that and take out the common factor, you would find that the gradient here gives us one half m, or more simply, then we can use that to calculate the mass. Both of these were acceptable answers. Question 10.4 asks us to calculate the value of x as shown on the graph. And now we can do that because we have been given the y-axis coordinate for the corresponding value of x. And since we have in the previous question calculated the gradient of this graph, we can then say that since we know that the gradient of this graph is one half m, we can then say that that gradient, which we know is equal to the change in the y value over the change in the x value, or value of the y axis over value of the x axis, we can then rewrite this as 11.98. Important once again to remember that this must be multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. So 11.98 times 10 to the negative 19 minus and to calculate a gradient, we need two points, so we are using these two points that are given here, minus 7.48 times 10 to the power of negative 19, and that is divided by the change in values on the x-axis, which is, in this case, x minus 0. We can then use this to solve to find that x has a value of 0.9879 or if we round that, that would be 0 0.99. Important as well to see that they have asked for the value of x, they have not asked for v squared, which means that we do not necessarily have to include this over here, times 10 to the power of 12, although the marking guidelines do say that that would have been accepted as well. Question 10.5. The experiment above is now repeated using light of higher intensity, how will each of the following be affected? Choose from increases, decreases, or remains the same. And it's important here to remember that when we increase the intensity, we are changing the number of photons that are striking the surface per second. We are not changing the energy of those photons. So when they ask how the gradient of the graph will be affected, obviously the gradient we have already determined to be one half times the mass. And since the mass over here, or the mass of an electron, has not changed, the gradient will certainly not change. So we can just say that 10.5.1, the gradient of this graph remains the same. Question 10.5.2 then asks, how would it affect the number of photoelectrons emitted per unit time? And now because we know that we are above the threshold frequency, when we increase the number of photons, we will automatically increase the number of electrons that are being ejected. A common question that is normally asked along with this that hasn't been asked here would be how does it affect the energy of the released electrons? Where in that case the answer is obviously it does not affect the energy because we have only increased the number of photons. We have not changed the energy. So when we increase the intensity we're just changing the number of photons. We have no change on the energy of those photons and therefore no change on the energy of the ejected photoelectron.